They say good things come to those who wait, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to be no exception. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ito, and I am happy to bring you, finally, 40 minutes late, but the ESEA Advanced Season 33 North American Playoffs. This is round one, and it's going to be between Third Impact and Lux Gaming. Now, as we have a small little technical pause starting things off, the player who is late to join, Mickey, is still not in the server, it seems, but... We are starting up, just a small pause before we get right back into things, so I guess in the meantime we can talk about both these teams. Now, let's first start with Third Impact. I'd arguably say that they are the favorite to win this, because um, towards the beginning of the season, I arguably, arguably favor them to win the whole thing, the entire season. And uh, the fact that they had such a, a turbulent regular season... I feel is something, well, at least personally, I was not expecting whatsoever. Maybe not the season that they're looking for. They finished 10 and 6, the exact same record as Lux Gaming. And Lux Gaming, I feel like, have been really surprising me. They picked up AB, I believe, midway through the season. I can't exactly remember the exact match, the exact week. But he has been doing incredibly on his team, one of the top performers. But even beside that, pretty much everybody else on the server at the moment has had their pretty insane moments. I guess all in all what I'm trying to say is that this match should be able to deliver and finally again about 40 minutes late we can start things off here. First round of our best of three tonight. Good evening my name is Ito and this is surely going to be a banger for us today. Two players set up over towards Mini and a quick ramp sack actually seems to be in order from third impact. Quickly making their way lower. Almost uncontested entirely here. Waiting for some rotate to come through and Nightmare will un be unable to deal with absolutely anybody of the Glock train of the terrorists. And because of that, now rotations, now a retake will have to be on the cards here. But the T's are just bunkered in such a strong position that I'm not sure if they can do much of anything here. Lunar will get them off to a good start by finding that first kill. But it's a crossfire for the rest of the remaining terrorists. And they will absolutely maul A, B, and Lunar. Scourge, no chance either. It's two kills apiece for AGM and T Connors. And Douglas snatching away one of his own. So that is the start. That is the kind of third impact I was expecting out of this team. And honestly, such a good start too. I mean, I feel Lux Gaming were just constantly on the back foot against that like really fast pace that TI were bringing to the table. It, it's really hard to deal with in a lot of situations. I don't feel like they're particularly like missing their shots or anything. I mean, think about what was happening over towards Door. That wasn't, you know... a very easy scenario to be put in, but you only did as much as you could. One kill and then die. Nightmare unable to stay alive for too long. Picking up a deagle in this round here actually gets a nice bit of nade damage to start things off onto AGM. But they're going to need to try to convert it into some kills if they even want to have a chance of winning this round here. Jojo will deny any chance of that from Scourge. He actually wants to extend it for a little bit more. That CT on the lower bomb side is making an awful lot of noise, and he'll walk right into the crosshairs to boot. Now AB is going to be the third man in position, trying to deal with this push, and he's going to do great. A double shot for him. The third impossible. He looks away at the wrong time, and it's the wrong moment to, to look away from your third destination. Mickey, unable to find anything either. I thought he had a chance to be a bit sneaky, but no. The Metal Gear Solid impression doesn't seem to work out, doesn't it? It will be a rather uneventful 2-0, minus that little uh, hint of surprise that we saw from AB's Desert Eagle. If it was a third, then there was a real decent shot, but unfortunately, <laughs> there's only so much you can do. Now full needs in play. Interesting. From Lux, not exactly sure what their plans are for here. Oh, they're going to toss them right through door here, but it's a bit deep. They aren't going to be able to deal with Do Jojo, who's closed the distance, and he's going to bring out the Mac 10, try to close the distance himself between the CTs, and they're all faltering, unable to do anything with these pistols. AB says otherwise as he actually picks up a double. Now it's down to a two versus two. I don't know how they've made it this competitive when 
This was basically third impact's round to lose. There's so much opportunity for them to close this out in a very clean fashion, but somehow they're getting all the results that they can want. A down into a one versus one TI, they'll, they'll stay alive, but they sustained so much damage through it all that I can't even call that a convincing round by any stretch of the imagination. Considering the minimal investment that was there from Lux Gaming, they got so much juiced out of that one. I mean, early on in the game, AB is doing a fantastic job with the Desert Eagle. Really has been able to get a two-piece every single round. and Honestly, he's been kind of the early lifeline for these team or for Lux Gaming. If he can keep up this kind of performance, I think I will feel a bit self-righteous about setting him as our player to watch heading into this game. But bringing things down lower, third impact, want to play the vertical game. Already down the B bomb site as Secret is completely uncontested. Rotate's not quite in. You see Nightmare, who usually was the person playing over towards B early on, has absolutely no shot of doing anything. It's instead Lunar, who is going to step up with an AWP kill, but he can't exactly push out for any more, though. The nades are good enough at at least warding off the CTs for the time being. But still, a man down, third impact have to defend the bomb. This is one of the harder sites for a CT to retake in the game. So, might be a possible task, I should say, excuse me, from TI. And that's off to a great start. A one-for-one -one trade. T Connors for Mickey. Douglas will get another one. Dangerous hasn't even had to peek his head, but when he does, he'll get it blown right off. Two on two. Again, these gunfights are going every which way, but T.I. are dragging themselves on top just by a hair. And it'll come down to Mickey against two members, but he just has to get out. There's no more time remaining on the clock. He's going to go up with it if he were to stay for much longer. But he'll die before the bomb even has a chance to detonate, and T.I. will continue their winning streak. Four and zero. Definitely. Uh, a bit of a depressing feeling for Lux Gaming. It was looking really promising, especially getting it off to a 5 versus 4, but, I mean, that's the thing about the lower bomb site. It can be so hard to retake at times just because there's a bunch of crazy different off angles that utilities sometimes can't even cover all of them. You know, sometimes your best bet is just that early smoke over towards Secret. Wait, Lunar, how did he get that shot? He somehow just immediately domes AGM. It's another 4 versus 5, so... Lux, don't even give me a chance to breathe before they're already ready to up the ante once again. Scourge. He watches with a D to his own right over at ramp, but he's forced to compromise his position down over towards the lower site. As third impact storm ramp. Yeah, I've been able to get this almost every single time so far. Although an exchange of AKs for Deagles will come through. TI still... I think have an edge, especially with the flanks. Two players up towards heaven now. This is such a strong position for Terrace to be in here. Because, really, the tables have turned. Although, Flux Gaming are turning the tables once again. This table is facing every which way at this point here. How do they get away with that one? Lux Gaming steal away number one off the back of an insane eco round. What? I have no clue how that just seemed to work out so favorably. There's a double Desert Eagle kill, but AB, with that AK-47, through the two players that were pushing from heaven, they were unable to neutralize him, and... Well, hey. I'm gonna say it again. This is the exact reason why I had AB as one of my players to watch. He is doing fantastic so far. 7-4 and four early on in the game. And we're only, you know, six rounds deep into this. Who knows? How much deeper he can get since it's going to be Lunar to steal my breath away and steal Dangerous's as well. Oh, but a nice little off angle from AGM is surely going to get him a kill. Net him a kill onto Lunar if he were just to peek a little bit more to his right. AGM just holds the angle, though. He knows that this is such a strong position. Lunar, not sure if he is going to be aware of it, but he can't really budge Lunar. He just has to watch for a cross from a very passive angle. AGM goes in for something a little bit more risky. Spots an arm and gets the kill. Converted just like that. Now four on four. AGM starting to meet a little bit of contention on his own right here. He doesn't eat his gr uh, grenade, but his teammate does. Both tag down a decent amount with that M4 in Nightmare's hands. That could most definitely come back to haunt them if that damage were to come back in... Uh, 
Maybe have them neutralized towards the end. But Mickey doesn't even want to let it get that far here. Two players located on the upper site, and both of them will find kills. It's going to be AB again stealing my breath away, as AGM is now going to have to do it alone. But Scourge will make it so there's absolutely no chance. And uh, Look, there is action happening very late in these rounds, but they just explode whenever they do. Third impact. I believe this actually was the uh, map pick of Lux Gaming. The third impact, despite starting on the T side, are off to one hell of a start. This action is just happening so damn quickly. And although they just lost this last round, they can still maybe try to get the bomb down over towards lower or something like that. Maybe close the distance between him and Scourge, and indeed they do just that. That was one of the important win conditions. Lux Gaming, this is a round that they cannot falter. I said TI were getting off to a good start, but this would be just too damn good. Ooh, healthy need onto AGM. He's down to a single point of health, so this can just be kind of the cleanup crew for the CTs here. Nate will start things off, but it'll be far from the finish. Now, they storm the lower site. Really? The Glocks just have to hang on for now. Lunar's so dangerous going in with this against, or with an AWP, but I suppose the P250 will be the gun to finish the job, so okay. Bomb down, one player removed from the server. It's not the worst of eco rounds for a third impact. But at the same time, I mean, Lux Gaming, they were really able to bounce back and take that lower site in a much more convincing fashion. B, no longer going to be their uh, antithesis, I suppose you can say. But that was against a full glocking third impact. I mean, if they have a little bit more effort... When it comes to guns, something of the sort, I'm not sure what we can even expect. Now Outer taken from third impact. It's a slow burn as they're pushing their way on through. But AB has to be in for a nasty surprise if he holds this angle for much longer here. Lunar will watch from CT, watching the cross in case things go from bad to worse. AGM will try to stop it before it even gets to that state. He finds one, Lunar. But AB is still relegated behind the smoke here, and that means that TI can start closing the distance between him and the AWP. Oh, look at this. Dangerous is actually taking it a little bit more vertically. Nightmare hasn't been able to spot him, and same story with Lunar. Nightmare, though, however, finds a kill. The numbers game is just something that Lux Gaming can play every single day of the week here, and they're coming out on top of it. As it's down to 2 versus 5 here, there's two very slight chances. That third impact can make this round work here, but they're very slight and most likely not going to work out. First one will be T. Connor. Spots Nightmare, hits the shot. Now, four on two here. That will prompt a rotate from Scourge over towards ramp, it actually seems. I thought it was going to be over towards upper, but no. No give. This makes things a bit harder now for the T side. As Dangerous can't find any early information on the A bomb site here, T. Connors will have to join his teammate in arms. Try to take the site, get the bomb down, and play it from there here. But, ooh, AB watching is going to give so much vital information out. A Molotov will allow the bomb to be converted, but the post plant probably has absolutely no legs for success here. Dangerous will try to make it happen. His teammate follows T. Connors, taking one kill to the grave with him here. But Dangerous, does he even have a shot at this? He does, but unfortunately, he can't quite close it out the way that he hopes here. Scourge will trade out his fallen comrade. Bomb will get defused in due time. And it's going to be now all evened up 4-4. Four to four. Lux Gaming. They're starting to claw back now on the CT. On the CT side, excuse me. I wasn't entirely sold after that pistol. That uh, we saw in round number 7, I believe it was. But round number 8, that was looking a lot better. How they just kind of let third impact... I mean, really, they dictated the pace of that round, and they're still able to retake very confidently. This is the kind of Lux gaming that you want to see heading into playoffs here, and they have not let me down yet. Another pistol force from Third Impact. Means that's most likely going to be another whitewash. Well, that's a good start. Two for one. AGM manages to sneak one away from the with the Desert Eagle. Excuse me. can actually go for even more. AB is playing with fire here. He's dancing with death and death does the tango with him. Bomb dropped. And AB is 
just continuing with another. It's a triple on the round. Maybe going to be able to get number four. But, I mean, this is the kind of, again, sort of solid play that you want to see from Lux Gaming. Again, they were faltering a little bit before when we're, they were against these pistols. But it's no problem from them. No problem for them here on out, rather. Now 5 to 4, taking the lead. AB still dominant in the server. 15 and 4. It's doing pretty damn well so far. At this point, I suppose you ask, what's next for TI? They're going to have a full buy coming through. Do they try taking the pace maybe somewhere else? Do they try to do that slow burn over towards outside? I feel like that was a very promising prospect for them, but this time it doesn't seem to be the case. Lunar, completely uncontested, takes down JoJo with Mickey even being able to find a nade kill on top of that. Onto AGM. Lunar, he's still peeking this over towards Redbox. Well, he's not going to be able to go for thirds, but the second is on the charts for him. And chalk this in as another round for Lux Gaming. This is such a hard situation for TI to be in. And I don't see any chance of it. Maybe a bit hungry for kills. Gets hit down to about 70 points of health. That's all that they're going to find. 30 points of health onto a player as they get whittled away from all different angles. <laughs> Nightmare. Even tags his teammate before actually striking terrorist blood. It's a bit silly looking, but at the end of the day, it is going to be round number six on the board for Lux Gaming. So they're getting off to a very nice start now. A couple of hiccups towards the beginning, but have seemed to stabilize and adjust to this pace that TI have brought to the table. And it's working out. No coach in the server, so tactical pause is most likely coming from third impact. Also important to mention that these teams are about equally seated. They finished the same record in the regular season, both 10 and 6. Bit of a upset, I suppose you could even say, for third impact to have a record like that. A lot of people expected them, myself included, to go... You know, something a little bit more dominant, like a 12-4 and four record, 13-3. But well, they were getting kicked by a number of different teams. With some asterisks attached to the name as well. They had a couple of hiccups, and well, that was a bit of a hiccup from Scourge. He only gets one with the Krieg before he falls, and Dangerous, he can't find a second, but that will be a Krieg retreat for the, egg, or for the terrorist side. If they take this lower, they can get the bomb down, play it from here. Uh, Lux Gaming, this again is a tough site to retake, but I don't see them losing this one, especially since the utils relatively low <laughs> on the side of third impact. They have three flashes to go around. Douglas will have to hit every single shot. First flash through, Connors. No chance whatsoever with the Deagle. But Douglas will try to do him one better. Indeed he does. He gets a double kill. But Molotov out of position forces him to change his angle here. Bomb is starting to get defused here. But Douglas is ready to play that game. But the game is brought to him. And it's something that is only going to go away from his team even further. It's 7-4 to four now. That was a real shot for Douglas though. Just hit a couple of more shots, we might have seen a completely different round, especially since Lux Gaming are basically stacked up on top of each other. But, nevertheless, the CTs continue. I don't know how many in a row this is now, but it is something impressive, that's to be sure. Now trying to go for a little bit more of outer control, Lunar relegates his position from Garage over towards CT, and looks for any early boost in towards Mini. Flashes through. That's not a game that TI seem to want to play. They're going to take Garage to their own device, or on their own terms, excuse me. JoJo left to his own devices, meanwhile. We'll remain in lobby. Lunar realizes that the potential for a push is there, so he's just going to be watching the cross sitting in his spawn where he started before. He doesn't miss the shot here. Mickey, Nightmare, both find kills on top of it. 
And this is just another completely clean round from Lux Gaming here. There's almost zero shots to make it work. Dane Joris and AGM, the last ones left standing in this. And Dane Joris, he's been in this situation before. He's usually had a teammate with him. And now he doesn't even have that luxury. As Lux Gaming, they're taking this one by one. Dane Joris, that was a pretty nice shot onto Mickey, but that gives his position away. Surely he's going to be zeroed in on from here on out. The bomb is down too. Not a lot of good headlines coming our way. What oh, dangerous is he actually going for seconds on this angle? I think A, or I think AB might have spotted him. He knows where two players are. If he can find number three, he can try to weave and duck around. But time wasn't in his favor, nor was Scourge's bullet, because that it continues. Another pause immediately coming through. This time, I would imagine it's also coming from third impact. Because that was a real shot at a push, too. I mean, third impact, they gave that a real college try. And it did not work out whatsoever. That very slow, patient game seems to be suiting Lux Gaming incredibly well in these past couple of rounds. Lunar, in particular, that is... Um, very heads-up play just to back up all the way to CT spawn. Just wait for a Pusher to eventually just walk into his crosshairs. I didn't get to keep an eye on where Mickey and, I believe, Nightmare were located to find their kills, but they didn't seem to struggle at all. It happened in all one fell swoop. Lux Gaming definitely getting off to another good start, aren't they? This time it's AGM taken out, but a trade comes through quickly from T. Carters here. And if he can extend for another, this could actually have some real legs, this push. And indeed, they are going to find it. It's a one-for-one -one trade, so it ends up at a two versus two nonetheless. But this is a lot more palatable for third impact to be in. No more four versus twos or four versus twos on the lower bomb site. This time, it's kind of on their own terms. They can make this happen. It's still a tough retake or a tough post plant. Made even tougher as they lose a player, but Dane Joris now knows exactly where both players are. He takes down the first, no problem. And Scourge, forced to expend his utility just to make it out onto the A-bomb site here. And now have an even footing with the last remaining member of third impact here. Dane Joris hasn't had the loudest game just yet, but T. Connors might have just boosted his team to victory in this round, and indeed, Dane Joris... He closes it out after the nice start from T. Connors. The two combined to, five all fi to find all five players. That is a much needed round for third impact. A wrap from around outer into mini. Uh, from there, things could have easily gone wrong if AB and... Uh, I can't exactly remember who else was on top of the site. But if they didn't get those kills, that could have been real scary. Luckily, everything seems to work out for them early on here. Quick spam through from third impact, and they want to bring it over towards ramp. Scourge watches with a nice little M4 in hand, but Lunar will strike first blood, not second. AGM will gladly take that one away from him, but Scourge is trying to overstay his welcome. He gets one more kill for his trouble, but that just means that the ramp is going to now completely, or excuse me, the ramp now completely belongs to third impact, rather. They could easily storm the lower bomb site here. Now, Lux Gaming, they're going to drag one rotation over. Maybe a second as Mickey is at the ready over towards ramp. Oh, my lord. What is AGM doing at this point? He hits the shot somehow on AB. This is somehow working out just barely for third impact. And talk about barely. AGM barely saw Mickey. And he still demolishes him. A triple so far. Can he make it a quad? He's so damn close to it. Nightmare. The last player standing against two members around that was looking so, so good for Lux Gaming after that ramp defense has completely fallen apart at the hands of one man, AGM. And AGM, oh, he actually misses a fourth. Now it's going to be back onto his teammate. Nightmare Jiggle peeks it to perfection. But he's dropped. And he's going to also drop a piece of utility. But it's over towards the wrong side. Jojo, how does he not get that? Surely Nightmare is going to be able to get the defuse off as well. No, he burns alive. Oh, that is terrible. Third impact somehow clutch out the round. 
through the fire in the flames, they carry on. Unbelievable. That has to be the most stinging round of the half that we've seen so far. That Molotov. Oh, I cannot believe it. That Molotov seriously saved the day, didn't it? It helps them considerably. Now Lux Gaming heading into this last round of the half have almost zero money to speak up here. They'll force up two AWPs, so it has a bit more potential than I thought, especially given that they're going to be able to get one, possibly a second kill too, as Dangerous is put down to 42. But from here on out, th Third Impact can kind of take their fights wherever they wish. The Ops no longer have free reign over those extreme sight lines and the P250s don't seem to be up for the challenge against these rifles and MAC-10s. A lot more convincing in this final one. Much better than the one versus two that we saw previously. Or the two versus one. They seem to be able to get it out of this last round of the first half rather unscathed. Getting the bomb down, have four players remaining. AB only has an AWP on a retake. I don't exactly fancy his chances, but he tries to convince me otherwise. Gets the first, but not the second. AGM will remove him from the round. A triple in round number 15. I have to say, I mean, trying to gather my thoughts after that first half, it wasn't too shabby, all things considered, from third impact. They're getting off to a good start. There was a nice stretch of rounds where Lux Gaming were looking pretty incredible. You know, with some of the aggression that you're seeing from people like Lunar pushing Redbox. <laughs> nice one, Michaela. Ha ha. But overall, 7-8 at the half. It's not too terrible, not too shabby from either team, but it definitely favors third impact, I'd argue, a little bit more. Just because this CT half is statistically favored <laughs> for the... Uh, for a third impact, I should say. Excuse me, but that is not off to a very good start whatsoever. Quick refrag from AGM and three players pushing through lobbies. Got to be a nice response in return. But Lux Gaming already have the bomb down and can play from here. They spot the angle and oh man, the T's just collapse on that angle in particular before they're even able to find any kills whatsoever. And the cleanup, it's done. It's dusted. Within a matter of seconds, Lux Gaming find a flurry of kills to close out. Round number 16 in a pretty nice fashion. That pistol, I feel like, is going to be incredibly important for momentum. If they get this follow-up here, then the third should be a shoo-in. Max 7 forced up. It looks like we're going to be seeing a lobby crunch. I think third impact have done this a couple of times when they play nuke in the past, and I think it actually might be a good addition to their playbook. But they have disagreeing thoughts. Conflicting thoughts. I'm actually just going to hold the line at a variety of different angles. One towards heaven, one on the site itself. T. Connor's holding down hut. Really, uh, it's like a, a variety pack of angles. Lux Gaming, they're not going to be uh, stingy with their util. Dropping nades every which way. And they're close to the distance. Take a look at what's going on here. Jojo, who has a chance to strike blood early on in this round. He's given an opportunity, but unfortunately can't quite finish the job. Nightmare, tagged low, will be removed from the round. T. Connors actually is going to be able to find three before he goes down with the Max 7. What just happened? It was like this ambush on the A bomb site. That was just some of the quickest succession of kills that I've seen in a while. Third impact with the guerrilla warfare tactics. Somehow, Lux Gaming are just unable to deal with T. Connors and his Mag 7, and then the pistols from there on out. Upper. That is just third impact's domain, isn't it? Well, I, I don't know what to say, but third impact somehow steal that one away in a pretty convincing fashion in their own right. to do from here, Lux Gaming. They're forcing up. They really have a lot of hope for being able to make this one work, but they definitely shied a little bit now away from the upper bomb site. However, this gives Dangerous a chance to shine. 
Flash and Molotov get exchanged here, but the player at ramp in question, Dangerous, is forced to relegate his position. He's now over, sitting towards the B bomb site, waiting for Terrace to come into their crosshairs. But Lux Gang won't give him it just yet. They're going to be rallying their troops, trying to consolidate as one unit before bursting onto a site at question. Oh my god, are they actually going to be going back towards A? This feels like such a gamble to do. The rotates haven't come through. They're pushing out towards Squeaky. Jojo finds first blood. This one's on to Mickey. Scorch, with Mac-10 in hand, will have to go massive here because his teammates sure as hell aren't. Douglas gets one onto Lunar now. AB, he's been convincing me a lot with this Desert Eagle. Nightmare is always a nut on the pistols. Maybe he can try his impression, but no. It's just a clean sweep. Third impact. They're basically gifted that round, really. It was a real big gamble for Lux Gaming to even go for a round like that, but it works out perfectly. I mean, third impact. That very slow played eco, or that slow played force, I should say, is, um, I guess, exactly what the doctor ordered to make it an even game. Now Lux have even less to work with here. No Mac 10s, no Deagles, hell, no armor. It's going to be going for a nice quick outer wrap all the way through. Going around the world, trying to see each other spawn here. Nice one for one to start things off here, but I'm pretty sure that's all the legs that this push will have in this round. Or perhaps not. They're retrieving rifles and actually doing miracle work with it. See Connors almost gets a bit too greedy, but no, he takes the kill where he can. And put things back into an even situation. Somehow Lux Gaming have made this more convincing than I ever thought, than I ever thought they could. But this is a real hard part here. Bomb is in the hands of AB. But they don't exactly have map control outside. Um, outside of outside. <laughs> the, neither of the sites are clear. There's still lots of utility, plus two kits remaining on third impact. Although this is a very dangerous round from third impact, they should be able to close it out. And get themselves onto the elusive double digits. He's will try to convince me otherwise. Contact playing through a door. It seems that their final destination wants to be the upper site. AB makes a little bit of noise, trying to drag out maybe a couple of bullets from the enemy team here. Indeed, they do, but they all go into his teammate's body. And T. Connors will get the same treatment swiftly. And that's it. It's done. Lux Gaming, that was way better than I was expecting, though. They had... I want to say they had absolutely zero invested into that round. They might have bought a flash or something of the sort, but overall, that collapse was actually really good. I would like to see that sort of aggression again from Lux Gaming. I feel like they're playing it a bit too slow for their own good at times. A lot of the map control that they have, they don't seem to be able to capitalize uh, on too much. Think back to that round where they had full control of ramp and they just weren't able to do anything with it. This is off to an okay start, though. Another one-for-one one trade with AGM and Lunar being the victims. I've said it many times before, but it still rings true that this does generally favor the T side because they can force the CTs to split their defense and maybe stack a bomb site, stack an area or two. Nuke is one of the better maps, I'd say, for the CTs to have a fractured defense just because rotations are so quick and there's a bunch of different angles that you can hold and group up, but Lux Gaming will try to take their punches where they can here as they're now making their way through ramp. Dangerous watches, but doesn't overstay his welcome. Tosses out a farewell grenade and maybe even has a welcome mat to boot. Now, it's taken once again. Lux Gaming, they have this ramp control, something that they've had multiple times in this half. But what are they going to do for it? They're going for the long wrap. Oh my lord, this could be absolutely lethal. Keep in mind, there's someone stuck in CT spawn at the moment. That's Jojo. And if he sees that player in heaven, he could easily strike blood. Indeed, he does. He finds a first. Second one is going to be on the Scorch here. He can't quite finish up the kill. But everybody will be there to back him up, apparently, in Lux Gaming. It's another opportunity just taken away from them. This just has to hurt to watch. Lux Gaming read them just like a book. It's 11 to 9, but that was another chance for Lux Gaming to take it down to lower. They seem so afraid of that site. 
Every time they have a lot of ramp control, they seem to completely neglect it in exchange for instead just trying to wrap all the way around heaven. Hasn't been treating them very well, hasn't it? Another force will come through. The T's successfully make their way down towards secret, eating a little bit of spam in the meantime. But if they can get bombed down, I consider it successful, considering the investment into this one here. It's just Deke's half armor. But this time, third impact are actually ready. The early rotate is through. Dangerous is going to be our guest of honor. Indeed, who's going to be able to find one? Very quickly on here, and the second will come from AGM. Although Dangerous is traded out here, this gives plenty of time for the CT to actually start rotating their way on through. This is actually not too shabby from Lux Gaming, all things considered. But it all gets whittled away in just a couple of seconds because the kills start flooding through from the CT side. And again, every single time where it's looking at least decent for Lux Gaming, there's just a breaking point where Third Impact are able to find a, a swarm of kills and just overrun the offense. It's a bit depressing to be on the receiving end of, I'm sure, but... Not the worst of eco rounds, I suppose. They're able to, you know, get another full by through, and it's workable. That's not a way to start, though. Lunar and AB tag down. Might be even worse. And ooh, look at this. Lux Gaming are going for something very aggressive, and this time it's starting to work out promisingly for them. JoJo removed from the equation. Will now force AGM. Go ahead and pull off something massive to hold down lower. Oh, but he's given up his head, and he's given up a kill. Four on three still. The numbers favor Lux Gaming as they're trying to take over that B-bomb site now. Dangerous will again be the guest of honor in question. He's going to be able to get one, but he's only going to be able to get that one. This numbers game is something that Lux Gaming are going to be able to play for times to come. But they need to try to get that bomb down soon. Why have they not taken over the site yet? They know both CTs are remaining there. They've given Third Impact a chance back into this round. And they're actually going to be consolidating their way out towards Upper. Onto the A bomb site. But I do not feel convinced by this round whatsoever by Lux. Especially since it could easily get whisked away from them. And indeed it does. How do Third Impact win that one? Oh man, that has to hurt so bad. Douglas even realizes it. He's going to toss down the little BM spray to boot. And... That is probably the most crushing feeling and a very good summary of the game. Lux Gaming. There wasn't a lot going their way in recent history. And uh, this doesn't seem to be anything to the contrary. It's been hard times for Lux Gaming. They don't have many more chances to drag themselves back into this game here. They're soon going to be staring down the barrel of 14 if they lose this gun round, and they might have to be stuck on pistols. In fact, I'm pretty sure they will have to be stuck on pistols if Lux lose this one. Up against 14, I mean, at that point, they're just going to be thinking about what to do for map number two. But there's still a chance yet. TI are always trying to switch things up, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Aggressive play from JoJo, tossing out a bit of utility behind it. He finds one kill for free. It seems like he wants to extend it for another, but he doesn't get too greedy. Same story with Dangerous over towards Lower. He just tries to take a couple of pot shots, but backs up. Now Lower is stormed over by Lux Gaming, but they sustain heavy damage while making their way down. One for one trade, but Dangerous is still ready, willing, and able to hit the shots. And same story with Douglas. It's AB, one against four. But he doesn't have a chance in hell to make it happen. The bomb is dropped. There's almost zero utility to speak of. 45 seconds, that is his only silver lining. But this is looking an awful lot to be like 14 for third impact. And a dismal state of affairs for Lux. Third impact, they have a party waiting at the B-bomb site too. AB has to really check every single angle here. I don't think he has... Even a shot at one. Douglas, he's going to make it so. A shot to the head leaves AB dead. Now, the bottom of the barrel will have to be scraped. Try to put together this potentially last buy of the map. Not of the series. Keep in mind, this is a map pick of third impact. 
So you do have to hope that they're going to have a convincing performance on it. And, well, they aren't disappointing. Lux Gaming. They seem uh, already tuned into Overpass more than anything here. They're trying out something a little bit different here on Nuke. And actually, it doesn't seem too bad. They've made their way down lower. Nightmare going for a vent drop is something that we haven't seen Lux Gaming try or attempt at all on the T side. But Dangerous is ready. He's wise to it. He's ready for all the wise cracks, but Mickey just tells him a fantastic joke to put him out of the round. AGM can't do anything but be relegated to a second hand position where he's gonna get taken down after only finding one kill. Retake effort begins though so damn quickly, but it's third impact. It's a game that they can't fight. Lux Gaming finally pieced together another terrorist round, but there needs to be a lot more where that came from. The danger zone has been avoided though, Lux. That was a round that they did not have a ton of money to work with, but the fact that they made it work thanks to some really key aggression pushing out onto that B-bomb site super early on, and most importantly, removing Dangerous, that is, you know, that's promising. It's something to work with. Third impact. They have a lot of mojo going for this force up here, but they're feeling themselves, I suppose. They say screw it to saving. They're going to be buying up Desert Eagles, Famasas, lots of util to go around. No AWPs, which we've seen a couple of times from players like AGM. Lunar is going to be the only sniper on the field. Actually picking up AGM's AWP in question. Definitely a slower, pu slower push, but if you take a look at the radar, this reeks of either an outside or an inner play. Looks like it's going to be the latter of the two. Ladder control, or now a uh, outer controlled. Slow play hasn't exactly been Lux Gaming's forte, though. Not sure if they have any sneaky plans for us to maybe switch up the playbook. But two players dedicated in her. Scourge trying to sell an A fake while his teammates slowly wiggle their way down. Maybe it has a chance. But Dangerous has something to say about it. He takes a shot and receives one from Scourge. And third impact, this might be another one that they're giving up here. Now the defense is going to be brittle from third impact. They're only going to have a FAMAS player and a second one located right on top of the site itself. And, well, he's not even going to be able to do anything here. Now rotates will have to come through. It's decent, all things considered. Three versus three as the bomb gets planted. But this is a very comfortable position for Lux Gaming to be in now. They can get into very po solid post-plant positions. And Lux... Do they even want to go for this? I mean, they're not going to have a ton of money heading into this next round. Or it might be best just to save their rifles. Seems like they agree with me. A save has been called. And the counter-terrorists finally give up the ghost. It's two in a row. And it's a very, very nice look from Lux. These are the kind of rounds that they need to win. That slow play has been their nemesis for almost this entire map so far. But they've conquered their fear. They've conquered the beast. And finally get number number 11 on the board. Three more to even things up. And five more to take it in regulation. But I'm sure Third Impact have absolutely zero intentions of letting that happen. From here, what do Third Impact do? I would imagine... Just probably not even force up around these... Uh, saved rifles. Yeah, two Desert Eagles drop, but otherwise, Jojo and Dangerous don't spend any of their hard-earned money. They're actually stank stacking ramp. Lux Gaming, in recent times, they have been actually favoring outside, so I'm surprised it's not a lower stack, but this definitely reads like some sort of counterplay. The rotations are quick, though, and AGM hears so many pairs of footsteps that he could just be Waiting for the fight to come to him. Lunar finds first blood. This one's on to Jojo. But AGM still lurks. Ready. And a bit of a cheeky angle, but Mickey's ready for it. A couple of shots will be all that it takes to neutralize him. Remove him from the equation. And in fact, third impact is going to be removed from this round completely here. A three versus four. Try to pull off a retake here. It might be, again, in their best bet just to save these rifles here. T. Connors most definitely does not want to give up this Krieg, but he does. In his last dying breath, though, he gets one kill. Douglas, in a one versus three, now has to pull off the Alamo, but 
Although he's so close to victory, 20 points of health between the last remaining two members of Lux Gaming combined, but he isn't going to be able to get it. <laughs> I love that little play that he had over with the door. <laughs> though. I, he stayed a lot alive a lot longer than I thought. Now, breathing down their neck, Lux Gaming might be on the verge of being within striking distance. A third impact. A push from Ramp early on is just a free gauntlet of kills for Lux Gaming, but they haven't figured out this third cog in the machine. That's T. Connors, and last time we saw him pop off entirely with a Mag 7. He's not even given the time of day this time around, though. Lux Gaming, they're starting to feel a lot more comfortable towards lower as they easily run over the defense. I was at least holding them back from taking it. It has no legs. Round number 13 on the board for Lux Gaming, and not too shabby. Third impact. They're going to have money heading into this next one. They can buy up pretty much everything that they could ever hope for here. JoJo, a bit of a silly position, I suppose you can say. I feel like... <sighs> What I really want to see him do right now is try to go for a defuse while it's super late. And that way, uh, it just drags some rotations over to try to get them to die to the bomb. But JoJo, uh, he goes for something else entirely, doesn't he? He tries to take a fight with Lunar, but the Desert Eagle is not on his side. Now this is starting to look a lot more favorable from Lux Gaming. Four in a row, I believe it is. Looking very promising. But their next uh, hurdle, I suppose you can say, lies in this next one from Third Impact. Full rifles and AWP brought onto the table. This is a fully fledged buy from Third Impact that Lux Gaming need to overcome. They've done it before. That's how they got to this place in the first place. This uh, situation in the first place, rather. And Lux Gaming, do they decide to change anything up? Indeed, they do. Longer no longer seems like the, or lower no longer seems like the friend that they want to hang out with. The upper site is going to be their order for tonight here. Douglas will be ready for it, though. He finds one uncontested. The second one comes through from T. Connors as he actually retreats behind the site to stay alive for a little while longer. But Douglas is doing the same. Now Lux Gaming, two men down, are in a very tough position, and it only gets more and more desperate for them as they might have just given it up. Lunar, a one on four. This one, it's not for, man, it's for all the marbles. What am I even saying? This one's so important that they didn't give up, so vital that they didn't give up, but they do. They try going for an upper push for the first time in a while. And third impact are totally ready for it. They shut it down with no problems whatsoever. Now 15 to 13, third impact are right back into this game here. Have at the very least secured overtime. And want to try to drag it just a step further. Take away the map that they picked. Round number 29, is it? He's already getting off to a good start for third impact here. Scorch nearly removed, but Mickey is just immediately obliterated. Holy hell, JoJo, what is that spam through the smoke? He nearly got two kills for his trouble, but he'll take one and a heavy amount of damage onto Scorch, I'm sure. Unbelievable. JoJo, this is definitely not the same JoJo that we saw. Uh, with those deagle shots a bit earlier, isn't it? Seems that when he has a rifle, he is ready to play. Third impact have showed up to play into map number one, as you can so easily tell. They already might be done with this one for the time being. Four on five. Not impossible from Lux. We saw third impact, impact in this kind of situation before when they're on the T side. They managed to drag their way to a victory, but... It's just only getting worse and worse as time goes by. AGM staying alive forever, it seems. Gets another kill. He backs off over towards ramp. Now a three versus five. 30 seconds remaining. Their last lifeline comes in the form of Lunar. Who's wiggled his way up towards heaven. Waiting for his team to push out towards Mini. If they can get out onto the A bomb site here, they have a chance. 
Otherwise, we're going to be going to overpass. It looks an awful lot like we are. Lunar, that lifeline in question has just been dissipated. Now eight seconds remain. There's no shot at this whatsoever here. Just go ahead, call it quits. We're going to map number two, third impact, taking their, their chosen map. So this is map that they chose. Don't get me wrong, but holy hell, towards the end of that, it was hard to tell who was in the lead. Third impact, steal away map number one, bringing us over to map number two. There will be a little bit more action where that came from, though. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back for map number two in just a couple of minutes. If you're just joining, my name is Ito. If you guys enjoy what you're seeing, please feel free to drop a follow or if you're feeling really generous, a uh, Twitch Prime subscription. I have emotes and I'm trying to allow for a little bit more Twitch action to come on through. Just had to update my overlays, but now we're actually back into the action. Let's go ahead and just bring it to some music. We'll be back soon. See you later. Your friends are 
Perhaps Overpass will suit Lux Gaming a little bit better. Good evening everybody, my name is Ito, and I am happy to bring you another match of ESEA Advance Season 33. And this is map number two between Third Impact and Lux Gaming. Now, map number one was an absolute doozy, there was a lot to it, but Third Impact were able to squeak it out 16-13. Both teams had some very convincing runs of form, but that was a map pick of Third Impact at the same time. So you have to hope that they're going to be convincing on it, TI. And they actually do manage to come out on top, eke out the win. Now third impact on the map pick of Lux Gaming. We'll try to do them one better. And, I mean, hey, talk about doing them one better. That is one nice shot from Douglas. Immediately removes Mickey from the start of this game. As it's a four versus five, Lux Gaming will be on the back foot, still trying to make a push in towards really anywhere that they can wiggle themselves into. And AGM will be the man of honor over on the A bomb site here. Gets one cl clean shot, but quickly chated out by two of Lunar. Off to a pretty nice start. He swings around to get that double kill. And with the bomb down, this actually becomes a lot easier for Lux Gaming to come out on top of. And they're getting all the kills to boot. Talk about a fantastic comeback right there. Lux Gaming. Just a flurry of kills after n losing one initial initially. is a uh, much needed boost of confidence after losing map number one in that the fashion that they did, in all honesty. So definitely a nice start. Still obviously have a ways to go, but if they can keep up the Santee, maybe they can put together a nice T-half. Impacts buying up to their own right. Will be paling in comparison to the Krieg, AK, and Galil, even the Mac 10s, even that Lux Gaming have, but they'll have a Scout, Mac 7, and a couple of Deagles to try to make this one work. However, no player situated at the A bomb site makes this a very, very tough task now. The closest point of contact would be AGM, but he's located over towards Bathroom and basically dead to rights if any T's were to push him. And indeed, that's exactly what's going on. Mickey feeling a little bit feeling himself a little bit rather I'll just go ahead and push his luck a little bit here Douglas taking down that's a rotate over from B but they still haven't taken care of AGM AGM still lurks lying in the weight and I mean Mickey here's that scope goes off go off so he knows that AGM could be lurking nearby here and AGM takes a shot dancing behind the pillars as kills go out every which way third impact just can't quite convert it in time and bobbing and weaving Lux gaming not only do they stay alive versus the eco of third impact, something that they struggled with on map one, but they look pretty damn well, pretty damn good while doing it as well. Bomb detonates, dangerous. He, you know, he's actually able to save full armor in a desert eagle alongside that smoke. Not too shabby to save whatsoever, especially considering that third impact they're going to have about zero to work with otherwise. Maybe they can force a couple of P250s if they want to stay above 2,000 bucks, but... Otherwise, they're going to be looking at most likely a number three on the board for Lux Gaming. Barrage of footsteps over towards B. Missed grenades over at B as well. Not the best look, but third impacts are not warded off by any grenades raining out. They'll just be hiding in pit here where Mickey is just going to have a day at the buffet. He's going to be able to find three. Basically a quad two. Closes it out. Actually, wait, no. He only gets three. The rest of his teammates steal away a couple of kills, but they still have very nicely lined pockets nonetheless. That eco's, well, at the end of the day, pretty anticlimactic. No results whatsoever from third impact. But it's no matter. They're going to be able to buy into this one any which way. However, they do have to cut a couple of corners. Keep an eye on AGM. He has to go ahead and do a glass cannon setup. Plus, third impact as a team only have one diffuse kit to speak of, and that's on T. Connors' back. Or waist, wherever. Standard setup, though. Third impact aren't going to try to gamble one site over another. Although they will have a quick rotate ready in the form of AGM in case things go awry. Lux Gaming, at least early on in this game, seem to be favoring long. The fact that they're actually going to be pretty much 
as one whole unit seems to suggest otherwise. Definitely seems like a counterplay of some sort here. TI, are they going to be ready for it? They seem to be receiving it rather well, and they're going to be able to find two kills. A third, no problem. JoJo has been able to just absolutely clean sweep alongside his teammates as they combine to find four out of the five members of Lux Gaming. And Lux, with a bomb down, have zero shot of making this one work. It's AB versus the world. And the world is not on his side for this one here. T Connors. Lurks around towards the big pit. It's unfortunate AB even had a good idea on where some of these members could have been, but he's unable to really thread the needle on some of those shots, and because of that, he goes down like the rest of his teammates. A very solid hole from third impact. That's basically the, uh, the dream scenario if you're a CT having three players over towards B. It doesn't always work out that smoothly, especially if the you know push is lethal. That seems to be working in that, working out just fine for them. Early play. And early nades from Lux Gaming proved to not exactly find them much of anything, but that shot from Lunar sure as hell will. That's AGM, the opper, removed. That's a very nice start now for Lux Gaming, especially since they have so much control of the map just because of that. B is kind of a wasteland. Lux Gaming have completely deserted that area. Ooh, nice spam through onto, onto T. Connors, excuse me. Makes the deal even sweeter. Because T. Connors is now forced to relegate his possession to something a little bit more passive and a little less opportune to find kills without being... Or, well, yeah, no, he's mostly going to get traded out. That's what I'm saying. Looks like Long Control is back on the menu, though, from Lux. Oh, hey, Flippy. Nice emote, man. You have good taste in emotes. You know that? Back into the game in question, though. Douglas will be a little bit more aggressive. He's holding by Divider at the moment. Long Control still coming through from Lux Gaming. They're being very patient with actually pushing the site, though. They're allowing Third Impact to bring a couple of rotates over from B, but they're not going to be ready in time to deal with the sheer amount of artillery going straight into them. JoJo and Dangerous now left stuck to rotate and take over the site. Will have absolutely no shot. I'm really surprised by Douglas in particular. That shot over towards a divider really seemed like it would have been a one and done sort of deal, but he's not even able to find the one. He's killed almost immediately. I thought JoJo was going to make a <laughs> little less noise on his dismount, but no, apparently not. Guns will be saved from third impact, though, nonetheless. And so they stay alive. If just barely. The money isn't going to be looking very promising for them. But they're going to be having, what is it, 2,400? So they can force FAMASs, a couple of Desert Eagles, and maybe have a decent amount of utility. From there, I suppose you can talk about what is the best bet for Third Impact if they want to try to win that round. Because Lux Gaming, they're off to a very fiery start. Definitely looking very comfortable on their map pick, to say the very least. I would imagine third impact at this point. Maybe you want to stack a couple of players over towards long or something of the sort. I'm not sure if they've really seen too much of what Lux Gaming are doing over towards long, but they're able to get up there practically for free every single time. But they seem to have different ideas. It's basically the same stack, only with a little less artillery to speak of here. They double up towards connector, and it's not exactly bearing the fruits that they would have hoped for. Dangerous will at least make it a little less sour by getting one with his M4. But that will just prompt the rotates to come out perfectly from Lux Gaming. Now bringing it over towards Long. Again, their tried and true favorite place of the map for the terrorists in question. They'll stomp their way up. The old stomping grounds setting up for an execute as well, it seems. T. Connors, the only one there at the moment, ready to receive it. Here's a Molotov goes out. That means Dangerous will now have to haul his way over. Be ready to receive this multi-pronged attack from Lux Gaming here. They get bumped down immediately. T. Connors accidentally AB. Or accidentally, yeah, I, I think that's a verb, accidentally. <laughs> I've seen, seen you, CS players use it as such. But that's all he's going to be able to get. He's traded out very quickly. Very significant hold for Lux Gaming as well. Because this was third impact. This was their chance to maybe get a little bit tricky 
with the CT hold. But it doesn't seem to give them much of anything. AGM doesn't even get to save his AK-47, so it's salt in the wound for that one. And Lux Gaming continue to look very, very solid on overpass. Where do we go from here? Third impact. It will be another force up coming through, or another buy up, I should say, excuse me. We're going to be able to pick up an AWP alongside it, so this is the, the fully equipped third impact. This is going to be a real test of their skill against Lux Gaming, see how they look on overpass. I haven't been very convinced by them, but now seeing all the works come through, maybe they have something in store for us. Not off to the best start, though. T. Connor's sustaining a bit of damage from that grenade. Douglas does the same with the nade, but he loses it to the bullets. That's where eating that early grenade damage really comes back to bite you. The trades are going every which way, but I think it will favor third impact. Oh, man, that is just unbelievable. Lunar stays alive for so long over towards the A connector, or the mid connector there, excuse me, that he's just able to have his teammate come around and remove the player before he gets removed. Now three on three, Lux Gaming are going to be able to force a gamble out of third impact of some sort. You see Mickey is just pulling off a perfect stall, keeping third impact stalled at this site, I should say. A failed smoke, though. Oh, that is a terrible look. That is not a very good start whatsoever for Lux Gaming as they're trying to get the way onto the site, but they don't get much further than that. A couple of shots come through. Jojo, a triple in the round so far, has been the hero for their third impact, but he's been removed. Now it's time for AB to do his bit of heroism as well. Dangerous. He's spotted, but not killed just yet here. The rotation actually comes around from long. What is that? AGM misses the shot and gives up his life. And that means AB has a real decent shot at doing this. This would be the upset of a generation this century here. AB, unfortunately, loses at the hands of Dane Joris. Dane Joris, is, Dane Joris just tries to change up the angle, and it works out perfectly. That was way, way too close for comfort. Oh, man, AGM. The fact that he just overstays his welcome basically gifts that kill for free to AB and oh man if only you knew how close he was to taking down Dane Joris as well that would have been one of the craziest clutches of the game so far bar none but at the end of the day it is another one for third impact here so when they have full guns in their hands they don't look all too shabby it wasn't the cleanest of rounds but it's in my opinion sustainable especially since now they have a Krieg to work with here Dane Joris Lovely 16 by 9 resolution allows him to spot Mickey, who's sneaking up on him. But unfortunately for him, and unfortunately for Jojo, Mickey is able to find one, nearly two kills. Which allows Lux Gaming to be on the forefront of round number 8. Smoke down towards short. Mickey at the ready with a MAC-10. The third impact being on the back foot right now. They need to extend for a little bit more information, third impact. Will they even be given the shot, though, is a completely different question. The answer to that is yes. They are being given so many amazing chances. Dane Joris, Douglas, T. Connors all finding kills in this round here. And they're going to try to continue. But that is where the T's start making some noise as well. They get a couple of kills in return. And it's down to one versus two, favoring Lux Gaming. AGM coming up from behind. Surely going to be able to find the first. But is the second going to be in order? AB versus AGM. Two incredible players in their own right here. But who is going to be the alpha member? It is going to be AGM. Couple of shots that was, I mean, it was just clean from all the way through. AGM was just holding that angle for so damn long. And he gets it. The clean shot and a little bit of tranquility towards the end. AGM pulls it off for his team. I don't feel as excited as I should be about that round, though, for third impact. Because it's another one where Lux Gaming make it very, very close. And take a look at the T or the CT economy from Third Impact. It's not very promising. They're going to be able to get that AWP in play yet again from AGM, who was the hero of that last round. But they actually might falter a decent amount against these pistols of Lux Gaming. They haven't been able to build up the economy nearly as much as they would have hoped. And I'm a little bit scared as a result here. Douglas, however, is doing fantastic with what he got. With what he's got, excuse me. He's able to find one, a double kill. 
And I feel silly for even having worried in the first place here. That is a lot more of what I was expecting out of third impact. That quick play ends up leading to absolute zero from Lux. Now within striking distance, third impact. Not looking too bad on the CT side themselves. But still, that money is uh, not exactly a full factor. Done well to pad their wallet a bit more. As you see, JoJo's on 3450, but still opts for the MP9. And Lux Gaming will go to square number one. They find a kill onto AGM super early on here. I didn't even give the time of day to that push from AGM, but holy hell, was that so risky? He pushed long solo, had no teammate there to back him up. The closest was Douglas, but he was basically in no man's land in comparison. And it's a gamble that does not work out whatsoever. AGM perhaps uh, lives long enough as a hero to see himself become the villain for his own team. As they bleed another player too. Douglas now. The second victim of the round for third impact. Jojo, God, if he keeps this up, soon to be the third. He's already put onto half point half HP. Gamble stack now comes through from third impact. They're expecting it to be an A hit, and they would be wise to it. However, they're taking their time. Jojo gets one, backs off just barely, but he's not ready for the second member. Wrapping around from blue. Lux Gaming have the world in their palm. And can easily decide to take this. Either way that they want. Nightmare. Contact plays over towards Long. Gets a free kill for his trouble. If he can spot where the second is, that can just allow his teammate to, or his teammates rather, to storm over the B site uncontested. But it doesn't even get that far. It's an elimination victory. And third impact, this is exactly what I was worried about. Their money is non-existent, really. Pistols around for everybody. Big ups to Jojo for being able to drop them to his teammates because he stayed on the MP9 there. And his MP9 wasn't even close to being what lost them that round. It was that very early push from AGM, that gamble that really came back to bite them. Nice shot from Jojo early on, speaking of the man in question. It was very risky, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. Third impact. There's still plenty of time left in this game to make up for it. <laughs> I mean, AGM's clutch, that makes up for it in itself. Go for even more. Lux Gaming take three early tags early on in the round. That means those Deagles are going to be even more lethal than they already are in the hands of third impact. They can possibly actually have a chance in this one. Smoke will dissipate over at mid. AGM Jojo right behind it here. But Lux Gaming still find kills, but not for long here because Jojo is there from behind. Finds a double. He backstabs two members, and he's actually going to get a third with the Krieg. Incredible in the round. Somehow makes it a two versus two. The retake will begin on the B-bomb site because Lux Gaming have made it their home. But will they be able to evict the members? It doesn't seem to be the case for third impact. But Jojo will try to convince me otherwise. He's found three in the round. Now searches for four and five. But does he even go for it? It would have to be such a ballsy play. He has no armor, no kit. And surely no chance. Lunar, he spotted, but not taken care of. Neutralized will be Jojo. But he still stays alive in my heart. That was way too close for comfort. I think Third Impact can be very happy with that round, though. They made it so, so close. Three members killed of Lux Gaming means that they have to rebuy those rifles, and they aren't going to be able to build a very solid economy in their own right either. Impact still on pistols too, though. We'll go ahead and go for a little bit more of a mid-pronged attack. But Lunar is ready. Watches for the angle. Removes Jojo, who is a hero for third impact in that last round. This time, has no shot. Oh, Douglas spotted. That means AB is going to be able to trade him out no problem. And it's another quickie. 30 seconds is all that it took, apparently. And Lux Gaming don't look the slightest bit scared as they overtake the eco for the second time in a row. This time, again, way more convincing. Here comes the next hurdle for them to overcome, though. Third Impact have been looking pretty solid when they've been able to get full guns in their hands. So Lux Gaming have a real challenge set out for them. 
Hey, GM, this time he's going for aggression, but it's elsewhere. It's over towards Connector. He searches out for an early peek, but eats so much utility damage because of it. Same story for Dangerous and JoJo. It only matters so much, though, because they are against AKs, Kriegs, and, and AWP, so they're all going to be one-shot most likely uh, pretty quickly, nonetheless. If it was an M4, that's a different story entirely. And wow, we're going to be looking at different stories all the way around here. JoJo, he opens up the storybook and writes down a list of two victims that he's found early on in this round here. The minute marked about to be passed. And Lux Gaming are one man down. Well, two in the round, but at a one uh, man deficit, I suppose I could say. Contact play in towards B, possibly, but bomb is down. This is so risky to go for here. Scourge would have to go huge here, and he's not going to be able to. Lunar will try to do the same. No chance either. And what well, was looking possible from Lux Gaming has just turned into impossible. As AP now looks to save the Krieg. Maybe even go for a bomb play if he's feeling real risky. It seems like he, it, seems like it rather. He was on fire for map number one despite his team losing that one. He had 30 kills. And over 180 R throughout the entire map. Maybe he can go ahead and pull something crazy for us. A nice little spectacle. Ooh, but AB's position. I think he's been spotted. Heard something of the sort. He's only able to get a kill on his way to the grave. But uh, I suppose it's a... Motivational kill more than anything. Lux Gamer are going to be able to easily rebuy into this next one. Round number 14. Third impact are keeping it competitive. And as expected, they're looking very solid on these gun rounds. That's another one where they are looking very good. AGM, even with his signature early aggression, it, it didn't actively harm them like it did before. And this time he's going to go for something where it actually will lead his team to getting the upper hand in this one here, immediately takes down Scourge. He's actually going to be able to extend to another. This time it's AB who's the victim in his crosshairs. Jojo, Dangerous, both find kills, and just like that, it's over. Lux Gaming, GG, go next. It's round number 15 for you guys, and it's going to be a 6-8 scoreline, most certainly for third impact. They can still make it 6-9, and that would be a very respectable halftime score. The T side of Overpass, no easy feat. But considering how they could have easily made it 10-5, they got a, you know, a little bit luckier in a couple of these draws against Ecos. It does feel a little bit bittersweet. Lunar holds. Holds. <laughs> I was wondering when he was going to turn around. <laughs> Perhaps he's a bit too patient for his own good, isn't he? 6-8, third impact now with a couple in a row. Seem to be able to up the ante now that they have guns. And this should be another shoe-in round for them. Lux Gaming will force up everything they can. They're really scraping the bottom of the barrel to put this one together, though. And it's not the prettiest. One AK to their name. Light Util. An AGM pushing out towards mid. That is a deadly combo, I'll tell you that. He's going to extend over towards long this time around. Find a free shot on the Lunar. That's the big gun down. Scourge will pick it up from his fallen comrade here, but... This is a game that Third Impact are more than happy to play. It's the last round of the half. You can play the numbers game, that trading game, all you want. The CTs are going to reign supreme if they keep up this kind of momentum. <sighs> Douglas does them one better. Takes down Mickey. But things grind to a halt after the fact. Scourge, the only rifle on his team, also holds the bomb. Also... Most likely holds the most likely chance of victory for their team in this round. Nightmare with a pistol dies like the rest of his team. Scourge is next on the chopping block. Maybe not the last. AB again, another one versus five for him. Down to one versus four. If he can divide his fights, that'd be nice, but it's not meant to be. AGM, a triple to close things out. He has been looking incredible on map number two. Sure, there's been a couple of hiccups. I mean, think back to what happened over at Long just a couple couple minutes back. He kind of gave up his life for rent, but he's been pretty clean from there on out. 
He learns from his mistakes, to say the very least, and Third Impact are doing well because of it. They keep it competitive. This is looking an awful lot like Nuke, isn't it? 8-7 at the half. Last time it was favoring Lux Gaming, and this time it is too, so... Wait, no, was it? I think it was favoring Lux Gaming last time. Either way, it was 8-7. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty close, no matter how you try to slice it. T are this time going to be able to move on to the T half, and I have a lot of questions for how they're going to be able to deal with this one. Because, again, all things considered, this was a very productive half from Lux. They got a lot away, or they got a, a lot of stuff accomplished when they're on the T side. Eight rounds is a pretty sizable sum. If their defense is even, you know half as good as their offense, it should be a competitive but a one game for them. It should be a map number three, <laughs> assuming things go their way, which towards the beginning of that half, it was. Small break in the action, but we're already done with it. If you're just joining me, it is 8-7 on map number two. This is Lux Gaming's pick after losing on Nuke, which was third impact's pick. They're looking to bounce back and make a little bit more of a name for themselves. My name is Ito, and this is for the ESEA Advanced Season 33 North American Playoffs. And we're right back into the action. Full armors across the board on Lux Gaming will be our buy in question. Third Impact will opt for a little bit more of a tactical approach to it with a smoke and a flash at the ready, taking over Waters Control. AGM, Douglas, and Dangerous all making it their home. They'll now just sit on it. With this newfound map advantage, they can be... Very pliable with where they want to take it. Seems that connector pop seems to be on the cards for them. AB hears it, will back up, and won't choose to overstay his welcome. Keep in mind, that smoke is from the T side, not the CT. So they're purposely dividing th themselves off from connector, which is interesting. But it will dissipate, and we'll be given another shot. There's going to be no smokes, no flashes put their way onto the say bomb site here and this is something that Lux Gaming can work with. Those P250s, straight up duels can be pretty lethal, especially at this kind of distance that like AB is at in particular. The rotates aren't through though. Lux Gaming will have to hit some of their shots here. It kind of feels like a an obvious statement here, but that's what happens if you don't Jojo just runs right over AB, who's been a beacon of light for Lux Gaming, but the light has gone out. And Lunar, Mickey are both able to step up and do much better in comparison. They're finding all the kills. It comes down to two versus two. It's a bit clunky. It's a bit of a heavy-handed retake, but it should be a successful one at that. And indeed, it is. Ten-second defuse comes through, comes through, but it's no problem. Lux Gaming will take that any day of the week, as they are going to be able to take the pistol, the second pistol, and improve to a 9-7 scoreline. And I am definitely getting flashbacks to what Nuke was like right now. This is the exact same score line that we saw Lux Gaming on. But their first hiccup came in the form of third impact, second round by. They forced up, just like they are right now. And they got absolutely crushed. Let's see if I'm going to be getting deja vu again. Oh, I just thought of it. I feel like a... Early molly over towards mid connector would be so big on a pistol. Huh. No clue. Nightmare. Slowly trying to extend for a bit of water control. Just kind of looks distantly. You know, Douglas takes a fight that he can't quite win too cleanly with Scourge. He hasn't found any bullets yet. In fact, he's actually received a couple. Lead is not recommended for a breakfast. HM, how does he even find that kill? He opens things up with one. The second, too much of a uh, tall order. Lunar will just barely scrape by, stay alive for the time being. Rotation should be able to come over from the CTs in due time. But they're not. They're not budging from this B-bomb site. Everybody is still all hands on deck to bring it over towards the ladder bomb site. And... That would be a gorgeous read on the situation. Lux Gaming, don't drag rotations over just yet. Once they see those smoke small tops and everything start raining in, they're going to be in for a very nice surprise, Lux. 
They'll have a great read on the situation here, but third impact is up for the challenge, but not up enough. The kills are overwhelmingly in favor of Lux Gaming as they're looking to go ahead and ruin the prophecy that was foretold on Nuke. But Dane Joris still has a voice in this round. He gets one kill, needs the second onto a very, very lit up Lunar. Six points of health versus 72 on Dane Joris. Third impact might have just gotten away with this one. Utter theft at the end of the w at the end of the day. Lux Gaming have to take it slow. Lunar slowly pushes out of heaven. He has to make sure to make this jump solidly. <sighs> he makes noise while doing it. Has no clue on wait. Dangerous. Dangerous might be. He looks away at the wrong time. Hits the shots, but Lunar just can't quite get all the shots he needs. It's Dangerous coming out with the clutch. I didn't think he was going to be able to pull it off especially with how overwhelmingly in favor of Lux Gaming that looked to be. But no, the prophecy was indeed foretold on Nuke. Lose the second round in the second half. I swear to God, I don't pay fortune tellers enough for this. 9-8. to eight. Third impact. We're right back into this one here. Right within that striking distance. And Lux Gaming now on the back foot against these rifles. We'll try to force up a couple of their own. Two scouts, two digs, or one dig, one P250, and an MP9 on AB. This could work. It, it theoretically could work for third impact here. But knowing them, they're going to play this so slow. The only thing that makes me feel this way is that they don't have a ton of util. And if they don't flush out some of these early spots, or if they s expend their utility just to flush out these early spots, maybe it could come back to bite them. Oh, but Lunar has been zeroed in upon and AGM is still taking the stool that is so damn risky but it's a risk worth taking I suppose his teammates however get the short end of the stick in this round as the P250s the force up seems to be netting them exactly what they need bomb is dropped on Jojo and Mickey will try to collapse around it here so situated over towards Fountain now he looks for a little bit more but he can't both remaining T's are on so low HP. But that's not going to be enough for Nightmare to do anything about it. It's again going to have to be a 1 versus 2. This time it's AB who's going to have to clutch it out for his team. Or else 3rd Impact will get away with this one by what seems like the skin of their teeth. Two rounds going this close just feels so terrible to be on the receiving end of. 10 seconds remain as they get the bomb down. The A site is deserted, and AB will be quick on the rotate. He's making so much noise while doing it. The jump up smoked off. AB will now have to divert attention, maybe go over towards bank, or maybe just straight up push through the smoke. He has no kit in play. That's a very big factor in this. He's most likely not dedicated to the saving cause. He misses his smoke as well, or I think so. I, either way, that wasn't the greatest smoke, but AB, he finds nothing. Time is starting to tick faster and faster. And the chances of him winning this are slimmer and slimmer. In fact, they're so slim that they don't even exist anymore. It's done. It's dusted. Third impact. They tie things up. It's 9-9. Nine to nine. That really, really has to hurt, though. Lux Gaming. I mean, there were so many decent opportunities in these past couple of rounds to somehow come out on top. The top of the beast that is third impact. But they're just unable to do it. They keep it very promising, though, and I think that's what's important. Third impact, because these rounds have been as close as they are, despite getting the bomb down and despite getting many guns out of the hands of the CTs, their money isn't that much better themselves. If they lose this one in a dominant fashion, then maybe we could see third impact have a chance, but there's absolutely no chance for Lux Gaming. Oh, my lord. That was devastation. Usually, when you see B stacks like that, they aren't nearly that aggressive, but... This seemed to be a different case, and it was not a very good, uh, not a very good case. <laughs> Nine to ten we go. Third impact officially take the lead on overpass. Map number two, and th again, this is the map pick of Lux Gaming. If they're going to show up and blow up, now's about the time that they start doing that blow up section.
slow default yet again. Mickey finds first blood immediately. I don't even have time to breathe before three kills already happen in this round, apparently. The fourth, surely on the cards, coming in the form of Nightmare, who actually is a victim. Who would have thought? I thought Nightmare was in a perfect position to find a kill. Maybe Lunar is going to be in a little bit of a little bit of a better situation. He sits atop the smoke upon his smoky throne, but he's going to try pushing it. Push his extension a little bit further. He finds one onto AGM. Now they're dancing, kissing in the smoke here as Lunar finds another. The retake effort is on. But lurking in the smoke will be JoJo. And JoJo is going to ruin the plans. Oh, no. It's all gone wrong. Lux Gaming, please. It hurts. It hurts. It makes my voice crack even. Oh, that is just the most... <sighs> Look, I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of this. Lux Gaming. That was such a valiant attempt. I have so much respect for what they're doing there. But JoJo is just one step ahead of them always. He has been on fire this game. 23 and 14. The highest in the server and no signs of stopping. He's on a one-way train to a 2-0 victory. And the only thing that can stop him is Scourge and Lunar. They trade him out, and they're at a lead at the moment. Third impact will now jolt their way immediately up towards long. Rotate will be in quickly from Nightmare, but he'll only have a P250 to show for it. And he even spots the players too. That means that Lux Gaming need to haul their way over towards A, because the push is on. Lux Gaming, they're not here in time. Third impact have already made their home on this A bomb site here. It's theirs to take. Dangerous will try to extend for a little bit more. Try to get a bit more information and a bit more of a man lead. They're going to be able to get it, but it's not without its asterisks. Bomb is retrieved. It's down to one versus one with Mickey coming up slowly on the flank. Douglas watches for it, but it's not good enough. Mickey is just too damn clean on the shots. And it's around stolen away by Lux Gaming. It's a back and forth game to be sure. The pendulum. Swings for either team, doesn't it? Now, we're at basically an even game. Third impact. You still have the money in their favor. Lux Gaming had to force up just to get a buy this healthy. And they have to cut, again, some corners. Lunar has a glass cannon, this one. Guess it only matters so much, though, because... We're getting the kills early on in this one. Lunar, in fact, is going to be able to get another one to his team's favor. So a two on four. What do AGM and, Dan and Douglas, excuse me, even do in this kind of situation? I mean, really, all their options are get kills early on. That's a good start. AGM gets one on the scores, but they're not going to be ready for the second player waiting in bathrooms. Lunar, who could actually be the hero of this round? He's a glass cannon, but the cannon is pretty damn deadly when it hits, and he's going to be able to prove exactly that. A triple in the round, 11-11. Lux Gaming are right back into this one. Unbelievable sights with that AWP. I kind of thought of him as a liability because the glass cannon, I feel like whenever I've seen it at this level of play and above, of course, it has not really been able to deliver on my hopes. But Lunar is doing one hell of a job at proving me wrong. He's doing incredible. One of the top performers on his team tied alongside Mickey and AB. And speaking of which, AB is actually going to extend above his teammate to find an early kill on. It is what was what that what? That did not seem like a full push from third impact. I have no clue how that just ended so quickly. But uh, that was just a slaughter. It's done. I mean, <laughs> Lux Gaming right back into the lead. That's a real motivational boost, though. Can you say? Now we're on to even footing yet again. Third impact now have guns. A real horse in this race. They're going to be trying to get the jackpot. Early Molotovs from Lux Gaming will ward them off for the time being here. Boost is read like a book. T. Connors punishes all attempts at some sneaky business from AB. As now Lux will be forced to reposition, play more passive. Because Lux Gaming 
or excuse me, because third impact might have just be gi been given a golden opportunity to bring it right back into an even game. That boost is the first time I think Lux Gaming have attempted it on this map. It does not work out, doesn't it? I feel like AB could have even spotted T Connors before. I'm not I not sure what that looked like from his POV, but it looks like he had plenty of time to react to T Connors, but just was unable to for one reason or another. Four on five though. Third impact are perfectly content playing this slow. They don't feel a need to up the pace, up the ante whatsoever. However, they might need to soon. Or perhaps not. They can sit on their laurels. Once again, JoJo's going to be able to find a second in the round. Three on five. Lunar will get one back into his team's favor. But third impact. This is a two-pronged push. They can bring it over towards B, over towards A if they so wish. AGM is still lurking over at A. And that is an incredibly important factor. Because he can make a whole wrap all the way around. Sure, the CTs are getting the kills. But not before AGM is able to show up with a couple of kills of his own. He's chimed in. And it is a beautiful noise that rings through the ears of third impact. A two on two. Definitely on the back foot now, Lux Gaming R. An AGM. Is this going to do them one better? Another kill to his name. Try to complete the triple kill. AGM. It's a long con. Working out perfectly. He gets the triple. Third impact. Steal it away yet again. So damn smart from AGM. This man had, what was it, 90 ADR during the regular season. He just added another 300 to that. This guy just pulls off some incredible solo plays. Neither team can pull off just a streak of rounds together. And that's a game that the CTs will always be on the back foot of. It's so hard to build up economy as the CTs. Guns, everything is so expensive. That looks game here. Gonna have to chip together everything they can just to put together the buy that they currently have. Three or two MP9s, FAMAS, two ops. I don't feel like two ops is exactly the answer to what third impact are doing, but maybe they know something that we don't. Lunar has been convincing me perfectly with his AWP shenanigans, but the distance is slowly being closed up on him. He's been very strong in these situations previously, but maybe this is too tall of an order. Shot rings out over towards bathroom. Danger is so ready on the angle. He upgrades to an op. Anything you can do, I can do better, says Mickey and AGM as well. Just so many kills from either site. Makes it so hard to follow what's going on. Can you only imagine what it's like to be on the defensive side of it? But as the smoke clears, third impact will reign dominant. They're on the forefront of being able to put themselves on 13. Lux Gaming... They're going to need to track this one back somehow, some way. They've gamble stacked over towards A, and third impact, Reddit, yet again. And it have situated themselves comfortably at the B-bomb site now. Post point set up. And Lux Gaming, I mean, yeah, they just have to save. There's really nothing they can do other than that. They'll be able to get an AWP, most likely an AK-47 as well, or just double ops. Yeah, double ops indeed. So it's not going to be the worst save. But they're starting to run out of room to keep doing this back and forth action. That, that was not the best wording. Uh, these back and forth round trading action. <laughs> it's a game that Third Impact have been able to come out on top of a couple of times now. The money will favor the T side. That is one of the new laws of Counter-Strike, apparently. Lux Gaming. They're starting to feel the pressure. Pressure mounts. Not much wiggle room left on their map pick. Map number two. A, B, and Mickey have been incredible for their side. But JoJo has been equally as impressive. In fact, more impressive. Everyone has really had their moments, haven't they? And now is the time for Scourge and Lunar to have their moments. A stack over towards B with only Scourge being the word otherwise at B. Contact play already out from third impact, though, is a recipe for disaster. 
third impact can't do much of anything about it. But they'll try and they'll do it fantastically of it. Perhaps I spoke too early. A flurry of kills comes through in favor of Lux. But just barely. They're barely scraping by to come out. To stay on top of this lead. Scourge flies a bit too close to the sun and burns alive. Now it's a two versus two, but practically it's a two versus one. Mickey's only on a single point of health. He is barely hanging on. He is on life support. Lunar will try to replace where his fallen comrade is, Scourge. But he is a glass cannon. But the glass cannon proves to be supreme yet again. HM now has to pull off the clutch. Spots one over towards heaven. Now has no clue where Mickey could be, but hits the shot nonetheless. A gorgeous one from AGM, but he needs one more. Lunar... Closes the, closes the distance, excuse me. I'm stuttering over my words, but AGM doesn't stutter over his plays. Gets the bomb down. Lunar sneaks his way up towards heaven. Will he be able to fell the beast? Indeed he does. Lux Gaming, they're alive and kicking. They somehow make that round work. How? How do they make it work? I can't believe I'm saying it, but it's 13-13. The double AWP force. Three upgraded pistols. And 13 for Lux Gaming. It's still even. This is unbelievable. But Lux Gaming have been rewarded for their incredible performance. And will have a nice buy to boot. Double Ops still in play. Meanwhile, no scopes on the side of third impact. This reeks of a water control kind of play. Maybe watching for boost yet again. Yep, this is what worked for them previously. But they seemed ready for it, Lux. At least when they're on those pistols. That four stack over towards B, perfectly red. But I'm not sure if it's something that's going to work twice. In fact, Lux Gaming, don't even bother with it. Going to keep it a 3-2 split. Scourge takes, receives a shot. Led for breakfast for both members. But overall, neutral game. If you want to look at HP numbers, sure, third impact are slightly on the back foot of this, but they make up for it in kind with some of the pushes that they can pull off that we've seen plenty of times this game, plenty of times this match, plenty of times this series, really. It's been one hell of a game, and there's still potentially another map of action to go if Lux Gaming are able to pull this off. 13-13, they'll just have to hold down the site. Three members ready to do just exactly that here. Scourge misses the opening shot here. He won't be given a second chance. Now Nightmare and Mickey have to hold this down bide their time as rotates desperately come on through but it's not working out they're only able to get one kill in response it's a two versus four and surely a save will be the i mean that's it's the only thing that they can do lux gaming right no way they go for this retake sure all the members of third impact are dangerously low on health but lux gaming just have absolutely no chance at making it work 22 kills for Lunar, AB, and Mickey. The first two of which have to be relegated to op saving duty. No problem, E. It's been a hard fought game. Tooth and nail for both teams, neither of them being able to come out with a stretch of rounds. But this is the breaking point. This is the most important round of the game, I would argue. 13-14 Lux Gaming are going to force together every last scrap of cash they can to put together this round. And it's not pretty. It's a USP on Mickey. Full armor. Smoke grenade. They're going for util here, really. We'll have to see that same exact performance that we saw from Lux Gaming just a couple of rounds prior. We'll have to see it repeated if we want to go even further into this match. Otherwise, it's going to be 15 for third impact. And that will just be so close to victory that you can practically taste it. Another neutral game. Third impact are perfectly content playing it slow. We've seen it so many times, this map. And when they play it slow, they're actually going to get punished for it. JoJo, that's the first time he's been punished, I think, this entire game. 
for trying to prod over towards B early and hold down the line. Lunar, such a risky shot for him to go for here, but high risk, high reward to be sure. Scourge now has to step up massively with the Desert Eagle stuck in smoke. Third impact members can't quite trade him out until they push their way on through, but it's one for one and Lux Gaming eventually come out on top. But they're not done yet. Third impact here. Be forming a conga line as they now make their way over towards bathrooms here. Still smokes in play. They could set up for a full for a full execute over at the A bomb site. But Lux Gaming are still in this one. Still a man advantage. A player spotted. Mickey has so much information right now. Rotations brought over. Everything brought over. Why are there no smokes going out for third impact here? This is so damn risky. Don't tell me it's going to work out. AGM is going to try to convince me of that. An insane shot on AB through the wall. Threads the needle. And now the post plant begins. One smoke still remains on Douglas. Three points of health. Can he find the kill onto Nightmare? Nightmare doesn't want to make it happen here. But AGM does. He's going to be on a trip. Triple in this one here. It's Nightmare against two. Don't tell me Third Impact are going to be able to pull this one off. This would be absolutely devastating. Nightmare is not going to have a shot. He's going to be having nightmares about this round here. We're going to number 29. Third Impact somehow squeak out a win. They're on match points. What the hell am I looking at? It's map point. Match point. Series point, whatever you want to say. This is surely in the bag now for third impact. Lux Gaming, we're so, so damn close to tasting victory. That force up nearly worked out. But now, they're on pistols. They're on such a broken, weak buy. It would take a miracle at this point to pull out a victory, force themselves their number 30. It would take a miracle. But I'm not feeling unlucky. Got to pull out your rabbit's foot. Have to avoid standing under ladders. Whatever the hell it takes to get some lucky charms going your way. Lux Gaming need your energy right now. Because this will take a monumental team play from them. It's an A-stack sort of play. They're all lined up in bathrooms for the most part. Third impact. They have the, actual, the bomb actually heading that direction. This might be something. A bit too early. Mickey will strike first. The Deagle unable to get traded out. He's able to find a second. What is this? Mickey. Oh my god. I think the lucky charms are working. He finds two before he's eventually traded out here. AB might be able to find one with his eagle. He chooses to hold the fire, but unfortunately it comes back to bite him. T. Connors gets revenge on his teammate. Oh, but Scorch does the same. It's back and forth all the way through. Not much time remains as third impact storm their way onto the site here, but the rotations will be swift. Lux Gaming already into this action here. Tosses down a Molotov, but quickly smoked out. Third impact. On the back foot of this post plant, try to make it work desperately. This is for all the marbles, really. T. Connors hits the shot, gets one here, but he's dangerously low on health here. Now one jumps out of heaven. And he might get dragged to hell because T. Connors has no say in this. AGM doesn't either. We're going to round number 30. How do Lux Gaming make that one work? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. My voice is cracking. I have not had enough water for this. I have not had enough water for this. How the hell does that work? Everything is breaking. The economy of third impact. My voice. My dreams. No way this one goes to full 30. Lux Gaming. I said they need to hope on a lucky charm. But my god, they should be buying some lottery tickets right now. One more buy. One more chance. Lux Gaming are so ready for this B push here. Surely they're going to be able to deal with it just fine, but the kills are back and forth yet again. I'm getting deja vu once again, and Nightmare might be time to set some sweet dreams for the Sandman, but he's not going to be able to. Why is this one that works for third impact? It was looking so good, but I think the fall from grace might be the fall from heaven. It's good games, surely. Lunar, he's not going to be able to do it. It's done.
is dusted. Third impact crushed the hopes and dreams. They just wanted to get more practice, didn't they? They 2-0 Lux Gaming, but they barely scraped by on both maps, to be completely honest. It was way too close for comfort at moments. Third impact nearly made that more dominant than it should have been. They nearly choked that one away when it shouldn't have happened. Incredible game to watch. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I need to drink some water. I need to eat. I have never heard my voice crack that much. That was something new for me. <laughs> you wanted to go to three? Me too, man. But I think my voice thanks me for that, but my wallet will not. That's going to be it for me tonight, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Ito, and if you enjoyed, please feel free to drop a follow or a Twitch primer. It really does help me out a lot, and I want to get more emote slots so everyone can use the three emotes that I have. But if not, that's totally cool. I just hope you guys have a good night. Congratulations to Third Impact and commiserations to Lux Gaming. They're going to be moving on through the lower bracket, Lux Gaming. And honestly, if they can keep up this kind of moment momentum, I think they can make it very far in the season. There's still a ways to go. We'll try to figure that out together. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you later. Have a good one.